Okay, today we're going to talk about momentum and collisions. So let's go through the first what, if, what do you think questions. So two skeeters have equal mass and are at rest. They are pushing away from each other as shown. Compare the forces on the two girls. So if they have equal mass, their forces should be equal to each other if they're, well, I guess it does say equal mass. And so they would, the forces would be the same and their velocities would be the same, right? Um, if the one on the right had greater mass, she'd be able to push with more force, moving this one a little faster. Um, and then how would your answers change if the girl on the right was moving towards her friend before they started pushing apart? Okay, think about those as we go through this. So, we're looking at collisions. So when bumper cars collide, our force one is equal to the negative force two because they're moving in opposite directions. And so, um, their impulse, since they're in contact with each other for the same time period, their impulses are the same. And so we can also say that the change in momentum is equal to each other. So the change of momentum of one object is equal to opposite to the change of momentum for the other object. So the total momentum is neither gain nor loss in the collision. So the momentum of this system, of the first bumper car and the second bumper car added together, is equal to the first and second bumper car um, momentum after the collision. So you're looking at total momentum of both cars, the whole system. So the momentum P1 is what um, would be like the momentum before the collision, and then P2 is the momentum afterwards. Here's our law of conservation of momentum. Um, and the reason why these are bolded, the, the and speeds are, the velocities are bolded is because the mass of the two objects usually does not change. So the mass before the collision doesn't change, but the speeds before and after will change. So you can, um, M1 is equal to M1 on this side, M2 is equal to M2. Um, so the total momentum remains constant during the collision. The momentum lost by one object equals the momentum gained by the other object. And so this is the conservation of momentum. So let's watch what we have here. In the absence of friction or any other external forces, the total momentum of a system of objects interacting with one another remains constant, regardless of the nature of the forces between the objects. When two skaters, originally at rest, push each other away, in the absence of friction there are only internal forces acting on them, so the total momentum of the two is conserved. As they move apart, the skaters have momentum that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Therefore, their momentum has opposite sign, and the total momentum is equal to zero, just as when they were at rest. Okay, so we would still have... So before the collision... Oh, shoot, let me get a different color so you can see it a little better. So before the collision, we have M1V1 is plus M2V2. And since they are both at rest, it was equal to zero. Now, um, since we have M1, V, you know what? I'm going to put a little initial, initial, and then that way we can put F, V1, F for final, plus M2, V2, F. Now, this case, this is a positive velocity, this is a negative velocity, so that's why this is going to be a zero. This is negative velocity because it's in the opposite direction. Remember, velocities are a vector, they're not scalar, so you do have to take into account direction, and that will affect this. So if a 62 kilo kilogram astronaut in a spacewalk tosses a 0.145 kilogram baseball at 26.0 meters per second out into space, with what speed does the astronaut recoil? So we're going to look at, we have the mass of the astronaut 
and the velocity of the astronaut initially plus the mass of the ball and the velocity of the ball initially it's going to be equal to the mass of the astronaut times the speed of the astronaut final plus the mass of the ball times the velocity of the ball final. So initially their initial speeds are both going to be zero. So we have 62.0. This should make this side all equal to zero, but let's write out our numbers so we can see that. Plus 0.145 times zero. Okay, we're going to have ask the astronaut 62. So I have 62 uh, kilograms times we're looking for the astronaut's final speed so let's leave that as a variable plus the mass of the ball is 0.145 kilograms um, and then we'll have 26 meters per second is the speed of the ball final so when we take we're going to subtract the point 145 subtracted over times 26 is equal to 3.77. So we're going to have a negative 3.77 okay, because we took the 0.145 times 26 is 3.77 and that would be newtons, right? No, kilogram meters per second. And so we're subtracting over so we can have a negative, we have a negative value. Now we're going to divide by 62 and we get, I have 0 0.0608 and it would be negative. Oops. 0 0.0608. Um, our kilograms would cancel out and we're left with meters per second. So does that make sense that a large, the larger object would have a lot smaller speed because it, it's harder to change its momentum, harder to change its velocity. And it's negative because it's in the opposite direction of the ball. So we found the initial, yes, substitute V, yes, we got the right answer, good. Would a pitcher recoil backwards? No, not like the astronaut because we're looking at systems without friction and so a friction is what holds the pitcher to the pitching mound. Okay, Gerard is a quarterback and Tyler is a defensive lineman. Gerard's mass is 75 kilograms and he is at rest. Tyler has a mass of 112 kilograms and he is moving at 8.25 meters per second when he tackles Gerard by holding on while they fly through the air. With what speed will the two players move together after the collision? So we have the mass of Gerard. Actually, I'm just going to start putting in numbers. So the mass of Gerard is 75.0 kilograms. We have the speed, his speed, and he's at rest, so his speed is zero initially. Plus, Tyler has a mass of 112 kilograms times, and he's moving at 8.25. Now, the one thing with the final collision, they, one detail to look at, they hold on while fly through, flying through the air. So they're moving together. That means their two speeds have to be the same. So um, if we have, let me just write it up here. For the right side, we would have Mass of Gerard times V plus mass of Tyler times V. If V is the same, we could say MG plus MT times V, since velocity is the same. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to have um, 75 oops, kilograms plus 112 kilograms times V, and we're looking at the speed. 
So let's take 12 times 8.25. I have 900, this is going to be zero, so we just have the 924 kilogram times meters second. It's equal to 187 times V. So take 924, divided by that, we have 4.94 meters per second. The kilograms are canceling out of equal V. So that would, should be, whoops, that should be our final answer right there. Let's see what that, if we're right on that. Yes, good. Okay, a glider. So we are going to do some, a lab later on in this chapter um, with uh, the air tracks in the back. And we have gliders that glide along uh, the little pocket of air, so it's pretty frictionless. So glider A has a mass of 0.355 kilograms, moves along a frictionless air track with a velocity of 0 0.095 meters per second, collides with glider B of mass 0.715. 0 0.710 kilograms moving in the same direction at a speed of 0 0.045 meters per second. After the collision, glider A continues in the same direction with a velocity of 0 0.035 meters per second. What's the velocity of glider B after the collision? So again, we have initial. So we have glider A's mass, 0.355 kilograms, times its initial speed, 0 0.095 meters per second plus mass of glider B is 0 0.710 kilograms times 0 0.045 meters per second. Now, since they're both moving the same direction, they can both be positive. If one was moving in the opposite direction, we would want one to be positive, one to be negative. Um, this is going to equal mass of glider A has not changed, so Glider A and, and it's moving in the same direction again with a velocity of 0 0.035 plus glider B is 0 0.710, but we do not know the velocity. So we're going to solve for V. So go ahead, calculate the left side times 0 0.095 plus. I get. 0 I just went through and calculated it. So let me. I got V to equal 0 0.075. And so since since we um, it's not a negative number, that means it's moving in the same direction. So the glider A was moving faster at first, transfers its energy and they're both still moving in the same direction, but glider B is now moving faster. Um, if you would have gotten a negative number, it just meant that it was moving in the opposite direction then. I don't think the answer's on this one. Okay, so now we've gone through these and you should be able to answer those questions again. Oops. So then collisions are sometimes described as elastic or inelastic. To the right is a list of colliding objects. Rank them from the most elastic to inelastic. So what factors do you think you'll consider? Think about that. Elastic or inelastic? Take a little time and look at those, discuss them. Okay, let's go through 
these. So perfectly inelastic, where when two objects collide and stick together, like the two football players, a meteorite striking the earth, the bullet hitting the block, um, momentum is conserved. The masses would combine at the after the collision, the masses combine, and we have this. So we really did an example of this already when we did the mass uh, of the two football players combining. So a 2 times 10 to the 5th kilogram car tra train car is moving east at 21 meters per second and collides with this fully loaded train car at rest. So on the left side, initially the only momentum we have is the 2 times 10 to the 5th railroad car because the other railroad car is at rest. So that would be 0. So I'm just going to write out this. And east, I'm going to make positive. Just in case we get a negative, that would mean west. So this would equal the two cars stick together. So we have the mass of the two via the two cars. It is two times ten to the fifth plus four times ten to the fifth, and then we would have a new velocity. So let's calculate that v. I get a positive 7. So that would be 7 meters per second east, since we've made east positive and west was negative. Let's check our answer. Yes, we were right. Um, now calculate the kinetic energy of the two cars before and after the collision. Was kinetic energy conserved? Well, what was the kinetic energy? We have our equation one-half mv squared. So initially we can find the um, energy and the final energy also and uh, the energy is not conserved. Why is that? Right, there's loss of energy, there's um, thermal, sound, all those energies that can be um, that can be lost. So we don't have a closed system, so we can lose some energy here. Um, kinetic energy is less after the collision. It's converted into other forms of energy. Um, so yeah, internal energy or the thermal energy, sound energy. Some kinetic energy may remain after the collision and it, or it may all be lost. Okay, elastic collisions were when objects collide and return to their original shape. The kinetic energy remains the same after the collision. So perfectly elastic collisions satisfy both conservation laws, both the conservation momentum and conservation of energy. Whereas the inelastic only conserve momentum. Uh, so two billiard balls collide head on as shown which of the following possible vinyl velocities satisfy the law of conservation of momentum. All three. Whoops, I didn't mean to go all th through that. But as long as the mass, well, our mass times velocity, this second one has no momentum, so we'd have this as long as the velocity would equal the 0.35 times 4, which is 1.4, as long as the mass times 2 and the mass times 2. Um, were to give you 1.4, then you would have conservation of momentum. Now, which one can't satisfy the law of conservation of kinetic energy? So beforehand, we have 1 half times the mass times velocity squared. Shoot, I forgot to square it. Two point eight is the energy, so we have to look at what one conserves energy, 
it would only be this first one because the speeds changing would change the kinetic energy. During an inelastic collision, the objects deform and they move separately after the collision. The total kinetic energy decreases. During a perfectly inelastic collision, the two objects stick together and their final velocity is the same. The total kinetic energy decreases. During an elastic collision, the objects bounce apart and move separately. There is no change in the total kinetic energy. There we go, those are the three. Um, so here's our diagram. We have um, perfectly inelastic. They're going to move before. They're moving towards each other and then go off together. So the momentum's conserved. For an elastic, the two objects bounce. So afterwards, they move separately, and both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. An inelastic um, deform, meaning they could both be moving in the same direction but they're not sticking together. So now what do you think? Most elastic to most inelastic. Well the most inelastic, something that would stick together I mean, two balls of modeling clay are definitely going to stick together. <clears throat> um, an automobile collision, maybe you'd stick together, maybe not. Or two football players, maybe, maybe not. Um, a baseball and glove, would they'd be sticking together. It stays in the glove. Now, a baseball and bat, the two billiard balls, and two hard rubber toy balls, they're definitely going to be moving afterwards in opposite directions, so I'd consider them elastic, whereas... And these are definite inelastic, perfectly inelastic, the baseball and the modeling clay. And then the football player and the automobile collision could be kind of right in the middle. So here's your chapter review. Let me look. I have that written down for due uh, Thursday. We're going to do a la air track lab on Wednesday. And then your chapter review due Thursday, and then you can finish working on your air track lab Thursday also. Okay, and then right now you have the rest of the period to work on your uh, this packet. There's problems problems D, E, F, and G. But let's um, I'll let you guys go through and pick out How about you pick out three? As long as everyone is doing the same one, I'll let you guys as a group pick out three um, from each problem set to do. And you'll have all period tomorrow also to work on these. And then they'll be due on, uh, due on Thursday or Wednesday. They're due on Wednesday. And your labs are due tomorrow, so make sure you have those all printed off in your lab books. Um, I guess it's not a formal one, is it? So you can just work on getting your questions and everything put into your lab book. But you need to have the labs by the end of the period tomorrow. You can work on your packet tomorrow, which you're due on Wednesday. I'll see you then.